All right. Hello and welcome back to Matchroom Radio with David Diamante. That is me. I am your host. And we're back for uh, Fight Camp Week 2 of 2021. And I am delighted to be joined by James Jazza Dickens, <clears throat> one half of Saturday's main event for the IBF World Featherweight title. Jazza, how are you, brother? Yeah, thank you for having me on. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. It's an honor, man. And you're looking really clean, man. Dapper, as they say up here in Essex. Yeah, you're looking really dapper, man. You look great. Where'd you get Where'd you get your suit? Is that a Liverpool creation? That's just someone's washing line. I say dapper as they up here in Essex, <laughs> but we just take them off washing lines from where they're from. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, like some guys, if you wear a suit and it's not fitted right to you, it looks like you could have a court date. But uh, <laughs> you know, you out. you look like you you look proper in that. You look you look Wall Street. Last time when I was wearing a black suit, there he said, "Did you get the job?" I said, "What were you talking about?" He said, "The glass collecting job." <laughs> so uh <clears throat> so you're from liverpool and i mean if if anyone that is on here can't hear your accent immediately you're a scouser um how much time do you spend outside of liverpool not much really um not much only for sparring go out to spa um wherever my camp would be that would be where to spend the majority of my, of my, my time you know so um, yeah i'm lucky everything around my house is uh, i've got carl evans university and um, sports science it's um, John Moore's University building over the road, the gym's over the road, um, stent conditions over the road. So everything's within like a, a mile radius. So I like to stay within my um, confines like that. I, I feel a bit, I like to get out because I've travelled the world and I know there's more out there. But yeah, when I'm in camp, it's four, four walls, that's all. You're pretty happy in, in your area. Oh yeah, the area I'm from. It's, it's, it's a nice place to grow up and um, my kids now live there. I went to the same school that my dad went to and my mum went to. So we um, went to village people, aren't we? What, how many kids do you have? Three. Wow, you got three kids. What are their ages? Twelve, six, and five. That and keeps like, you. That, that keeps you busy. Right? That's a full time job. I'm lucky, really, very lucky. Boxing is my, it's my job. Uh, Miguel, she she deals with the kids, so I'm very lucky to have someone who takes the, the pressure off me in, in that way. You know. Yeah, you are very fortunate for that to have a great I've, missus. I've seen them. I've seen them one time in um, the last five weeks. One day, in the last five weeks. You know. That's got to be hard for you. It is challenging, but um, this is my choice. You know, what can you say? It, it's a killer. A killer. I hope. I hope they know that it was. Um, well, when I say I hope, it, I hope it works out for them as well as me because they they don't sacrifice for them. They sacrifice for me because this is my dream and my ambition. So I hope that it um, it works for them. Oh, I hear what you're saying, but I think it's a sacrifice on both ends. You know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's hard for you too. Yeah, you, you can you can put it like that, but I think a lot of people say you know they like to take the day and put pump the chest out and say I'm the dad who does this and that, but the truth is I'm selfish and I've been doing this all my life, so that shows that it was never for them, it was never for anyone, it was for me. So um, I hope it works for them too. You know, I, there's one thing I admire about you. You know, you you you, you so Liverpool in a way is kind of like Brooklyn. We're like brother sister cities. You know, we're kind of the underdogs, right? Like, we have Manhattan. Obviously, you guys have London or Manchester, these other cities that are kind of bigger. And um, so Liverpool kind of takes the piss, whereas sometimes Brooklyn does also when you're looking at, like, a place like Manhattan. See, yeah. But uh, one thing about people from Brooklyn, we keep it real. And Scousers are kind of very similar. That's one reason why I love that town. And you're you're very much like that. You know, I hear you talking about different things in boxing, and you say, ah, you know what I mean? This is just... This is all just smoke and mirrors, and tell us a little bit about that. The bullshit show. The bullshit show. That's what it is, exactly what it is, and it took me a long time to figure it out, because when I was a little boy, when I used to watch the people on the telly, um, you can grow up with a bit of, um, these people on the telly aren't your identity, but then you you flip it around and you look, you are, the, you are that person all of a sudden, but you still don't feel like you're that person. You no one ever feels like that person. It's just a bullshit show, and it's so the people orchestrating the um, the party, and you're just a part of it. Do you know what I mean? It's um, it's a tough one to explain because when I was a child, if I heard someone, I asked Carl Frotch when when I was a kid, what was it like winning that belt, that WBC world title there? And he went, it was all right, and it broke my heart. <laughs> You know what I mean? I Leave it to Carl. I was like, <laughs> Leave it to the sheriff of Nottingham to break <laughs> yeah. a kid's heart. Yeah, Big right. shout out to Carl. <laughs> that's great. Go ahead. T tell I me more, though. I, I don't mind. That's just funny. But go ahead. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking, but I tell me. I was getting ready for this big story. It was all right. And he just like walked away as he said it. And I thought, is, is that it? It's got to be more than that. Do you know what I mean? So anyone who yeah. is a world champion who come in contact with, I always say, what was it like? And you get different stories. Tony Bell uses like, 
thank God, this is like him. Um, <laughs> you know, your dreams come true at that moment. If I could retire there and then, but that sort of thing, you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> because experience was just, just deflated you. <laughs> just, wah, wah, yeah. wah. It, was, it was bad. And um, he won't remember. He's obviously like, he's, everyone was trying to ask him, you know what I mean? He's probably just looking, not willing to tell a story again. So he just said that I was all right. But he's sure it was his dreams come true. I don't know, but. It hasn't seemed to deter you though. No, because I always follow what I know how I feel. Yeah. But yeah, I still don't know how I feel. You're a tough bastard. You keep but going. I've got three days to go. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. I say cars are tough bastard because if he thought <laughs> if he thought it were not, it was all going to be all right before he won a world title. Why does he keep going? He I'm a, doing it. You and I is going to be amazing. He is a tough bastard. Yeah, but I think it would be amazing if, if it happens. But but there's even though you're you're this close, you're still so far away, right? Like it's yeah. it's it's a uh, there's it's a big fight to happen, and we're obviously alluding to the main event on Saturday night, which is against Kid Galahad uh, for the IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. This is obviously a rematch from your fight about eight years ago. Yep. Um, most probably everyone has seen the fight. And, you know, I'll tell you, really interesting fight. I, I um, Man, I can't wait to see the fight Saturday. It, it's very interesting because I think that over the years, both of you are different fighters. And I know you've said it and Kid said it too, but do you really believe that it has no bearing on, on what's going to happen Saturday? The previous fight? The previous fight. Um, I can't see in what way it would. It would. How does it affect? You know what I mean? maybe, it, maybe mentally, yeah. strategically, I, I guess more mentally. It could, it could only have a lasting effect mentally because as you see, like human beings with a new body all the time. Do you know what I mean? We're probably... Three new bodies each. Do you know what I mean? There's probably not one part of us is the same as in, on that night. Do you know what I mean? The memories are the same, um, but the mental approach to it is is probably the only lasting effect that you could have. So, and it has it had any on you? No, but for for him it could be the very same. He could be hoping that it stays the same as that night. He could hope that we we go in there where we left off, but I can't go in there where we left out left off. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it's just. It's, different fight it's, it has to be i have to rebuild myself and get stronger before before this happens again i mean what makes it so intriguing I mean, there's so many things that make this an intriguing fight first of all there was not much between you guys in that first fight until the stoppage it was a really close fight it really was it was a uh, pretty brilliant to watch and both of you guys have fought for world titles before you both come up short so you guys both want it so bad, and you guys both have such belief in yourself, and you're both complete gym rats. I mean, the work ethic, from what I understand, between the two of you, I mean, there's just there's nothing to choose from there. You guys are both every day going at it. So it's two freight trains coming head to head. Yeah, he probably feels the same day, but it's like there's no one in the world. There's nobody in boxing who's give what I've give nobody. I'm talking about anybody in the situation. I was thinking last night, is there anyone here who can outwork me? And there's not. That's even even the man who put it, who's done it, put it all together. Eddie and his dad, I really believe me work ethic is that, and that's to say the statements, but the, the, what I give for the sport, it's just, it's unbelievable. The godfather of Merseyside boxing, George Vaughn, that's what he says. Yeah. He says, and he's worked with everybody. And he said, no one works as hard as you do. He said, your resting heartbeat is, what, 32 beats per minute? Is that true? That's crazy. Lower, lower than that. That's insane if that's true. Yeah. Just in top physical shape. Yeah. That was then, that was in, uh, like halfway through camp when he said that. So it was coming down, so it's lower than that. It's like, what does Georgie mean to you? He's special. He, He's got this way about him now. I, it's, I don't know. It's like a, when you say the, the man at Brooklyn thing, it's a scouse thing. Maybe somebody else wouldn't get it. I don't know. He's got this way about him. I can't even tell you. I can't tell you. Try. I'll be kicking. I'll be kicking my own feet trying to find the words. I mean, I'll be. I, I can't. I can't put it into place. What? The words were. Has he been like a father figure to you? Um, no, because I've got a father. Um, I've got friends. He's just been a coach. You know what I mean? 
what a coach is supposed to be. That's what he's been. Um, a good coach, a true coach, not a professional coach. Um, yeah, he shows that he he's in it with you. We're on the hills. He's eighty three years old. We're on the hills of the morning. Six a.m. Yeah. Yeah, and you've, you've seen Everton Hills. Ever, Is that again? ever been there? Everton yeah, Hills. Sure, sure, sure. He, like, he's going up to himself next year. And like people say sometimes, like he's not very vocal, is he? But he doesn't have to be because we work so hard together. It's a nod, it's a look at the eye. We know that look. We've got a good connection. Do you know what I mean? It's a connection. We've got a good connection, and not everyone has that. Kind of great coaches, but if it doesn't click, it doesn't click. Do you know what I mean? I've got a great coach, and it doesn't click. What about another scouse legend, Derry Matthews? It's fantastic because he, he knows, he gets it because he was coached by George. He was with Georgie from the age of 17, I think he was, 18, turning pro. So it's like, he he knows what it is to be with George. So one time we were all kneels, Derry came with us once and I was watching Derry and Georgie walking down them as I was, as I was coming back down off my last hill. And I was looking at them thinking, I wish that he repeats itself. Will it ever be... <laughs> will, will Derry ever pass on that'll be me and George <laughs> right <laughs> with another young fighter so yeah it's a great great relationship and I've said this many times before but growing up I had posters on my bedroom wall as I said the bullshit show I had all these posters on the wall looking at these fighters to be on these posters and Derry was on loads of them he had the old fight school um, posters yeah I had them on my wall I had many fighters on my wall but yeah, Derry was one of them. He was like a local legend, world champion from, from around by ours. And now he's in your corner. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's fascinating. Let me ask you that as the, the, the young kid talking to Carl Frotch. How does that feel? <sighs> you can't buy it. You can't buy it. You can, there's nothing. If that's your, if, that, if, that, if that's the area in life that you want to fulfill your ambitions and desires, there's nothing else. There's nothing else, do you know what I mean? I'm living my dreams in many ways. I haven't I haven't topped them off by winning the world title, but it took a long time to it's style and error to get a team. And I've got a great team around me, but Carl Evans, who's the sports scientist and nutritionist and strength and condition coach, Jerry, as you said, Georgie, <coughs> Tony Bellew, he speaks for himself. Um I've got just uh, me my family, just to have these people around me and I think they're supporting me, do you know what I mean? That's a bit strange. They're all supporting me. Wow. So it, it is, it's everything. If you can find that in life, not just in boxing, in any area at all, you're a lucky, lucky man. When you were a kid, you talk about having these posters on the wall, and you said you did have a father, which I know you do. Obviously, you had a mother too. And this has been documented, that your parents struggled with addiction when you were young. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that was like growing up? Same as it will be for the other kids who are going through it now. It doesn't stop. never stops. Um, just moves on to another drug. Um, what was it, 80s, 90s, heroin, ecstasy. Moved on to weed, moved on to cocaine. Um, going on to different drugs now, and they like sort of spice and jails and stuff like that. It just never stops. It's... People will always find ways to help them through the pain, and that's what it is. It's just a um, it's a coping mechanism. So self medicating. Yeah. God bless these people. You know what I mean. Um, it's not personal. But but addiction is the most selfish thing in the world. <coughs> they don't mean to do it to the people around them. That's what addiction is. Addiction will take everything that you've got from you. But we were lucky enough to have the strength to love each other all the way through. It's a beautiful thing, but it's a very, very difficult thing. I mean, as a kid, how, how did it make you feel? How did you get through that? I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm still finding ways now. How to get, how to get through it. Um, I developed my own cope, coping mechanisms. I swore I never touched a drug in my life. Never have. But I, um, I developed my own coping mechanism. Do you think it's maybe training, boxing? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Why does a twelve-year-old kid go to the gym and? Um, get punched in the face, and come home, enjoying it. Why? Why does he enjoy being in, inside the fight? Why Not not the glory of winning, or the kudos of being a fighter. Why does he enjoy 
getting punched in the face, trading leather, getting stung, getting buzzed, and coming back. Why does he enjoy that? Do you know what I mean? That's dysfunctional, to say the least, if you think about it like that. It took me years to figure that out. Am I willing to drop my character defects that I've developed? No, because most of us aren't. I'm not, you know, we, we cling to our character defects like anything, don't we? They're our most precious source of um, survival. So that's my fighting. I think what you just said is extremely deep. And I think it's really real. And I think I understand it more than you know. Thank you for sharing that. You spent some time out in the States uh, with a buddy of mine, actually, uh, Dino. You know Dino? Dino Spencer? Yeah, Dino, yeah. Down, down at the Fifth Street Gym in Miami. What a place. Yeah, good guy. How was that? It was just fantastic. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey. It was absolutely fantastic. You're talking you know? to a yank here. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was an amazing experience. Um, also, it wasn't just Dino. It was also Chiro Perez. He was training there. I don't know if you met Chiro Perez at the yeah. Fifth Street Gym. Uh-huh. Loads of good people here, coach guy in the fifty gym. Um, there's just so many people. Mad Josh Dempsey, the, the grand the grandson of um, Jack Dempsey. Loads of great people there in the gym, and um, they looked after me because I I needed help at the time. There was no fights coming up. I lost three fights. Um, no one was working with me. Last time I fought on a matching show was I probably about nine years ago. Um, stunk the place out, and then. Didn't fight here since. <laughs> it's a business. It's been a hard road. But as I say, it's the bullshit show when I'm back here. I'm back on the bullshit show because I've worked hard. Don't don't think that when I'm saying the bullshit show, it, it means a negative thing. It means it's an amazing experience for me to be here. Do you know what I mean? But it's hard work to get here. To, just to be take part of the show. It's like, when the fight got announced, I go back to the USA story, but when the fight got announced, it's like, who's this fella fighting? You know what I mean? Who are these people? It's like when we watch a soap episode, a new character comes on. It's like, who's this? It's not Pat Butcher and and, uh, and Peggy <laughs> Mitchell, do you know what I mean? Who are these new characters? And that's what it's like, yeah. getting onto the show, do you know what I mean? And, and fans know what they want, and they know what the, f- the faces are, they're willing to, they want to see, they tune in to see, and when you bring a new character in now, I want to stay, I want to remain a character on the bullshit show, do you know what I mean? I don't... I, that's what people are like. But in when I went to um, Miami, it was the opposite. It was tough. It was yeah, it was tough. It it ended kind of abruptly. Can you tell us about that? Twelve men in, in the room in the hostels. Um, it's just a mad, mad. It's probably the nicest place in the world to live, but when you don't live there and you don't reside there and you've got nothing in your pocket. And your family at home, they're waiting for you to come back with an opportunity. It's tough, do you know what I mean? I was going in the gyms and just looking at out. I had over, over underground just bad in eight, eight weeks. All I wanted to do was grab an opportunity, do you know what I mean? I was lucky to have Dino and, um, and Coach um, Chiro Perez to, to guide me and to help me. And they cared for me. They cared for me. And that was, um, I still thank them now. I missed them now. I thank them. For the care that they show me, because they could have just, could have just been another number, but yeah, man, Chiro, every day picking me up, taking me to the gym, dropping me off. He got food, you know what I mean? Feeding me, I'm looking after you, oh man, do you know what I mean? They got me sponsorships, shout outs. It's a guy who sponsored me too. He's, he's kind, really, really kind people. I, um, I would say it was an act of God, because when you give everything up, you've got three kids and you leave your own country. With twenty six dollars, what's what I arrived with? I left with about eighty pounds, with no accommodation, nothing. You know, it's how am I gonna eat? Just got to Portugal. I went with a one way ticket, and um, got to Portugal on a midway stop. And he said, hey, "Where's your ticket to get on? Pl- where's your ticket back?" And I said, "They haven't got a ticket back." And he said, "You can't get on a plane then." So was even at the start of the journey, I was trapped in Portugal. Because you can't travel on a one-way ticket, but you can from England. So it was just from me off. It was just like, I was stuck in the airport. I didn't have money to come home back to England. Do you know what I mean? So my next month's sponsorship to go to America, we used that for a flight to America to get a return flight back. And um, just like, I was, that's boxing for you, though. You, I was poor as the man on the street, but... 
felt rich in the gym. Do you know what I mean? That is boxing. It doesn't matter like you're white or black or blue. It just boxing's boxing. If you're good, you're rich. Sometimes you know I mean? you're black and blue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you're black and blue. Uh, in my case, mostly white, black, and blue, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. So it's like if you're rich, and that's what I always found. Boxing took me out of a, of a life of addic- like family of addiction, and gave me a great life. But when I was in America, it was just on repeat. Maybe mm-hmm. it was my paradigm. Maybe I had to get off the ride, you know what I mean? And that's where, where I'm saying. There's a deeper means when I say the bullshit job. My paradigm was repeating over and over and over. And um, I had to get off it at some point. And I have. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm not going through that whole life cycle again. Because a lot of people don't go, they don't end up far from where they started off in life, you know what I mean? Unless they make changes. And I had to make changes in my life, in my mindset, in my mentality to say, you have to stop living like that. If you want to, if you want to be a world champion, you need to fucking feel like a world champion. You need to live like a world champion. You need to extract goodness into your life like a world champion. Although it was a great experience, it was a poverty experience. You know what I mean? But I'm not living in that poverty paradigm anymore because I lived in it for like twenty eight years of my life. You know what I mean? And now I've um, started extracting goodness in my life. I'm just having that mindset. I can see how things change. You probably think I'm talking a bit, a bit wacky here. Because what's he, what's he on? But it's a real thing, you know, if you, whatever you believe, that's your existence. Speaking of world championships, you fought one time, like I alluded to, for the for the world title against one of the pound-for-pound pound greats, yeah. Guillermo Rigondeaux. Um, obviously, it didn't go your way. You broke your jaw. Um, well, he broke your jaw. Can you tell us about that experience at all? And, and, and how, I mean, because now, I mean, obviously, you've gone on, you just... Uh, beat Lee Wood in a very close fight in the MTK Golden Contract, the semifinal. Then you beat Ryan Walsh. So you you've been through some very very tough fights. Do you think this is putting you in much better stead for Saturday night? Yeah, definitely being the only, uh, the experience, the, the occasion. I, I feel like I'm um, I'm better adapted to the occasion. Do you know what I mean to enjoy it and to not to not go through it with a snarl and to think fuck sake, who are you looking at and and is, is someone want to fight me today? I know I'm not going to fight till Saturday. I'm going to be relaxed and calm and all them little experiences, they, they help you along the way. Yeah, I believe that they do. But what are the key takeaways that you kind of, from these fights, coming into Saturday, in your mentality, in your game plan, like what, is it? Is it both? Is it the mentality and the game plan that, that changes because of the experiences that you've had? And if so, how? I've never like really taught game plans. I think when a game plan goes wrong, it was a shit game plan. When it goes good, even if you never had one, it was a fantastic game plan. <laughs> yeah, of, co- of course. Do you know what I mean? Coaches, <laughs> of course. Coaches take too much credit for what's actually going on in there sometimes when they talk about game plans. Do you know what I mean? I get it. Game plan tactics. Basically, doing what you're best at. And you're, not sh- you're stupid if you're not doing that anyway. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't look too much into game plans. It's more of a mindset and mentality of... Um, Chipping away, we've all seen the, the picture. The guy who's um, got the pickaxe and he's and he's going through the tunnel. And the diamonds is so close, and he turns back. Have you seen it? I have, and it's funny you bring that up because I just did a podcast last week with Lee Wood, who I'm going to ask you about in a second, and he brought up that same exact did he? meme. Yes. Well, I've watched. Maybe that maybe that's podcast, a good maybe. omen right there. Maybe I did because he he won the strap. <laughs> he won the strap. So that's a maybe that's a good omen, man. Well, that was it. Every time I go, every time in life when I go down, I get back up and I go further. I mean, I've been down so many times, and there's no more further for me to go. I can't if I, there's no more higher level. I've been British Commonwealth and European champions, and in my last two fights I've beat the, beat the British Commonwealth, the European, and the, now the world title in my last two fights. Um, so there's nowhere for me else to go other than win a world title if I'm going to keep improving. Do you know what I mean? So every time I go down, I get back up stronger, and I know that. Every bit of pain I've had through boxing, not pain, every every lesson, every experience, it's got me that I know I'm right there now. Yeah. I'm just waiting to fucking burst onto the scene and be world champion. One thing that concerns me for you in this fight, <clears throat> when I watched the, the last fight, you're obviously a southpaw. The way Kid Galahad can switch hit and he can fight out of the southpaw stance, seemingly very effective, it almost neutralizes that southpaw advantage if you want to call it that it, it's an advantage if you use it wisely um it, it, so there's no game plan for that it's just 
fight the way you know. I fight the way I fight. You know what I mean? I fight the way I feel. Like that, that's it. I fight the way I feel. I, um, do you do you go in maybe like the first couple of rounds, kind of information gathering, or do you go in just let's have no, at that, it? No, that go fighters have to do that. You have to go in. Okay. Information gather, everything. So, um, you don't go in information gathering. Yeah. You do rounds eight thinking about information gathering because you're always setting a shot up. You're always thinking about your next move. So that's a constant thing. You can't be in there not gathering information. Right. Everything's a feedback. Do you know what I mean? Unless it's a one sided beat down, and you've already you've seen everything you can do. Everything can look at every bit of variation that he has. Then you can rein in on knowing that this left hook's coming back now. I can step back or I can lean back and then ping him again. But everything, good fighters adapt. So therefore, you're constantly feeding on information. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, when you I say do. switching, him switching, doing this and that, I don't look at it like he can switch, he can do this to me. What I look at it is there's more information. When he switches to Orthodox to try this, therefore, he's carrying too many too many ideas mm. so it's like he's forgetting about what happens when he does switch back in a minute mm. and he's thinking about what he's trying to set up now do you know what I mean so sometimes you can also I think boxing's five or six moves on repeat and that the good fighters do the same moves over and over we see Lomachenko he spins out and he spins around we love that move but he doesn't stop doing it he doesn't vary it he just does it over and over and we love it but then he the only way he gets away with doing it is because he does other things to take your mind off the last move. Do you know what I mean? But when you try too many tricks, sometimes you can you can be a victim to your own quality. Let's talk for a second about last week. I assume that you watched the fight. Yeah, I did. It was a hell of a fight, yeah? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was amazing. I jumped up. Yes, when when Kanzu went down. You were excited for your for your countrymen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, well, you go into it and you say you, you want to win. Yeah. But... Was I going to be the green-eyed monster? Was I going to carry a bit of envious jealousy there? Was I? I don't know. I wouldn't know until he got his arm lifted. How do you, do you have a bit of that? We all do. Yeah. We lies if we said we didn't. What I'm saying, I didn't going into it. Yeah. But obviously, we question ourselves. We're truly honest with ourselves. We have the capability to turn into the self-driven, ego, ego-possessed, jealous people that we can be when it doesn't go how life should be on our terms. Do you know what I mean? So, um. He's doing well, he's doing well, texting away. Yeah, he's doing well, he's winning. I think I've got him up. The scorecards are mad. I think he's winning. Am I just being biased towards him? And then when Kanzu went down, I went, yes, to the arena. So I realised at that point, no, I really want him to win. Since then, I've watched the podcast with you. Yeah. Oh, you did? It. Yeah. Okay. And um, I've watched other, other interviews. And then um, come, I've said this a few times, become a little bit of a fan. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, really, hard, it's really hard to root against Lee Wood. What a, what a lovely fella. He's a lovely guy. If I knew that last year, they wouldn't have been the animosity in the build-up. But, yeah, lovely, lovely man. So what happens Saturday, tomorrow, if you win the strap? When? When you win the strap, if you win the I have to say if, you can say when. If you win the strap on Saturday, would you want a rematch with Lee? Maybe a unification? Is that something that, 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 that you would fancy? But I don't you know I mean it's not something that I've got to one step at a time. Yeah, it's not my job. It's like I said, we can speak on Saturday. You know what I mean? We can speak on Saturday, and then it'll be it'll be a bit unfair as well. It's his moment. You know what I mean? It's his moment. This is my moment. That was his moment for me to be like, yeah, I want him now, and why I haven't got no rights to him because I beat him. It doesn't mean that. It means he went on to beat Kanzu and he was fantastic. If we fight again, we fight again. If you said to me, right, Galahad's just had an injury, would you fight him now? I'd say, let's go. Of course. But I'm not going to call him on because the fight's not made, the fight's not set. So I'll get this one out of the way. I'll go on with a champion Sunday morning and um, we'll see where we're at then. You're a gentleman and I appreciate your answers. Um, the fans have some questions for you. Are you okay to answer some fan questions? Please. All right, wonderful. Liver Lily asks Jazza, how much influence has your manager, Tony Bellew, had on your career? Massive influence on my career and also my state of mind in life. Just to see, just to hear him talk and know he's from the same city as me. Um, do you support Everton also? Yeah. You do, okay. Yeah, I'd love to emulate him and fight in Goodison. Yeah. I'd love to do that. And um, when people talk about Josh Waddington, fighting the leads, I say, no, I'll be world champion. You come and fight in Goodison, you know. 
But yeah, just just the the mindset and to understand what boxing really is and how it really works. Yeah, I've learned a lot of Tony. Speaking of, you know, he, well, he's a great guy. I, I'm so excited that he's going to be there on Saturday because uh, if you know Tony at all, he wears his heart on his sleeve, you know, in true Scouse fashion. He says what he how he feels, and I'm sure it's going to be – he's going to be over the moon uh, watching you fight on Saturday, you know. Um, I mean, I remember – when we were watching, uh, what was it, Usyk and Chisora, and he's on the side just screaming, yeah. <laughs> you know. There's nothing like Tony when when he gets into it. It reminds me when uh, Frank Bruno was ringside for Ben and McClellan. Yeah. Banging, banging on the canvas. Absolutely. <laughs> impartial. I love it. Yeah, impartial. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, because he's got the great walkout tune, you, you come out to Salisbury Hill, right? The yeah. Peter Gabriel song? Peter Gabriel, yeah. Can you tell us about that? We had three CDs in the house. Me auntie gave us a computer. Remember the computer's that big? Um, she had a, she got rid of an old one and she let and she gave him we he just took it. The situation it didn't even, we didn't even have the internet. We just took the computer because it was going the other way. That's just the way it is, isn't <laughs> it? And um there was three CDs, Sting and the Police, Tracy Chapman and Peter Gabriel. And so I used to listen to them in the spare room when there's nothing to do as an only child. And um, that song always stuck out. So it's real, Peter Gabriel. Don't know why. As a young child. It hits you in the right spot. Yeah, I don't know why that would stick out to a kid either. It's, it's, like, it's not a child's song, is it? It's just, I don't know. That's the one that does it. Yeah, it's the one that does it, yeah. And every fight I've had, that's, that's been a song. Lovely song. All right, Michael Warburton asks Jazza, there's been some activity on the Jazza Dickens YouTube channel lately. Is that you starting to think about life after boxing? No, that's a, that's me starting to think about life as it is now. So many people get a... Um, get caught up in the past and they go for the past back it doesn't happen you gotta stay with the times you gotta gotta evolve and that's what it is do you know what I mean it's like 10 years ago you'd be laughed at if you were a grown man on YouTube 10 years ago you'd be, <laughs> you'd be laughed at especially where I'm from my 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 dad and my girl laughed at me and when I said I'm gonna start a YouTube channel they laughed at me do you know what I mean and I was looking at them thinking you're laughing at you yeah. and now you'll be laughing all the way to the bank you're taking a piss at you you're just laughing at me <laughs> And you were like, no, we're not. But then couldn't contain the laughter. And I said, you'll see next year when it, when everyone's got it. I said, I'm going to do a fight camp because I'm telling you now, I'm going to ch- document my camps because everyone's going to be doing this. This is the future of boxing. I'm telling you now. And it is in it right now. We're doing it now. We are, you know what I mean? We are in the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I seen it. I That's do, right. I do believe in staying with the time. So it's not thinking about me the uh, future. It's thinking about me present. Got to adapt. All right, final question is from Benji Curtis, and he asked Jazza, I seem to remember it being quite controversial when you quit Team GB to turn pro all those years ago. Does watching the Olympics this year and previous tournaments make you wonder what might have been? No, funny enough, no. I always wanted to be a world champion. I've seen the Olympics as a way of, way of getting where I am now. Like The biggest, the saddest tour for me would to be staying in the Olympics to be going the Olympics now. We're, I'm here now, do you know what I mean? But if I was at the Olympics, I'd be thinking about being a world champion. A real world champion, not Olympic champion. In my mind, world champion is world champion. Boxing, real boxing. Um, so, the, the only sadness in that would be me still being in the Olympic team. I'm so young, I had to go through that process of um, being on the Great Britain team, but I was bitter. Very, very bitter towards the Great Britain team. So bitter. Why? Because I, because life went going how I wanted it. You know what I mean? My life went on my terms, and I weren't getting picked like I wanted to be. I weren't waiting about me, 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 and not that I was a brat, but I, I wanted to face off against these people and weren't getting opportunities to do it. And why do you think you weren't getting the the nods? Back then, I'll tell you because. They don't want to fight me because I'm too good. Now I'll tell you because they were invested in these people above me. Do you know what I mean? Um, you grow and you learn, don't you? But so it was a lot of politics. In my, from my perspective, yeah. From their perspective, it was business, and we're picking the man who we see to for the job, which was um, Khalid Yafai at the time. You know what I mean? Or he been to Olympic Games, heavily invested. I just wanted to fight. That's it. But it's not like that. It's not like that. Any kids who think that it is, they're going to get a shock when they get into that position. It's not like that. You don't 
just doesn't work like that. You don't, you don't, you don't put the gloves on when you feel like proving a point. There's, a, there's business to this game, mm. um, <laughs> and the more more that's financially invested, the more the more the web becomes of business. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I was I was bitter leaving, but um, it went hard. I was happy to leave because I was I was living as a pro as a like. A nineteen-year-old kid that was getting paid as a professional boxer, which was I've been doing for nothing all these years. I've been training just the same, working so hard, and now I'm getting paid for it. It was strange. Do you know what I mean? My paradigm was being from a poverty background. I was blowing money, thinking that my mentality comes from being skinned. Do you know what I mean? I put myself back in that situation. Right, get rid of your money before your next camp, so you can train hard. Not realising you can still say that with money in the bank, you know. Mm. Do you know that? Yeah. I mean, you can still get up out of the bed. If the bed's got silk sheets on, you know that's okay. <laughs> Just a mindset. What is that? Marvin Hagler said that, yeah. right? It's hard to get up for those early 5 a.m. runs with silk pajamas. Yeah. Well, it's not hard, is it? It's not. It's just it is what it is. You're getting up or you get, or you're staying in. It's, yeah, that's my mentality. You feel positive or you're negative. You're strong or you're weak. It's, it, um, although there are dualities, I just believe in choose one. You gonna be the fucking champ, or you gonna be the bum? What are you gonna be? What are you gonna be? Well, Saturday night we're gonna find out. Yeah. It's a hell of a fight, Jazza. Thank you so much for spending the time to to talk to us, and we wish you the very best of luck on Saturday. And uh, for the fans out there, we have a little exclusive. It's our today's little exclusive, and that is that Akib Fiaz's fight with Kevin Baldespino will kick off the live action on Matchrooms Boxing before the bell, and it'll happen this Saturday on all the social media. So that's all we have time for today. I'm David Diamante, and we'll be back tomorrow with more Matchroom Radio.